I like silence so much, as a, both for myself as well as as a teaching method. And what I see when I'm quiet and present in front of a group that's present. It's kind of like um, if you would be able to see the songs that are playing over the ethers, the radio stations. If you could see all these streams and there's a channel for everyone that is their unique channel and it's constantly pouring down and you're the radio you can tune to it or not you can receive it or you cannot receive it but by being present and by being quiet you begin to naturally and it might be uncomfortable at first there's a few humps you know you can feel people or yourself be quite uncomfortable after a busy hectic day or a few months or a few years depending on how often you take silence to cleanse yourself you will find it's quite confronting to be silent to be quiet especially if you're in the presence of others who are able to maintain that presence it will be amplified even more it's like being in a room where many people are very very tuned to the radio station that's coming through for them. So there's this full orchestra of harmony, of resonance, of power, literally power, coming forth, coming through. And to be tossed in a group like that, or even in front of one person like that, if they're able to really hold that space, can be disheveling at first, can be a little uncomfortable because you're facing yourself all the falsities that you build up every day you know all the context all the assumptions all the baggage all the other people's energies all the cares and concerns all the judgments and insecurities and perversions that you carry with you along your day inevitably being part of a human civilization to then suddenly be stopped in your tracks is like those negative g-forces, you know, when a, a fast train is suddenly comes to a halt. It's like, what's going on? And so you have to face yourself, you see yourself, you notice yourself. You don't notice that you have a, a body where everything goes with it. In this case, a body of knowledge, a body of information, a body of energy, a body of emotions. And suddenly that comes to a stop in a space like this. And you suddenly notice that you have such a body, such a body, baggage. And it's good, therefore, to come together in the presence of the Creator, in the presence of life itself, of pure existing, and to let that baggage unwind itself. Because otherwise we're just talking from our heads and there's no heart. There's no soul, there's no song coming through. There's this beautiful symphony that wants to come forth. But because we lack, generally speaking, we lack an awareness and attentiveness, a quietude. The quietude is a means to an end in a way. Quietude is a means to awareness, to gain self-knowledge, true self-knowledge, not the conceptual kind. True, direct, immediate self-experience experiencing that of being. So it's good to come together in this space so that our radios can be tuned to this naturally. It naturally happens. We're, we're always picking up each other's vibes. It's inevitable. We're all empaths. You can close yourself off to this. You can believe it's all your own stuff, but we're constantly resonating. And more so as the vibration globally is amping up, there's less and less of a barrier between one being and the next. The higher the frequency, the closer it is to the vibration of unity, of oneness. And so the barriers and the walls that previously could keep transparency at bay are dissolving. The veils are thinning worldwide. This is a planetary cosmic development as well as a sociological collective development. But that's secondary. We're forced into this transparency by the nature of the vibratory upgrade, if you will, that's happening. And 
so we are forced to become transparent. We are forced to face ourselves in that negative G-force space of suddenly coming to a halt, suddenly being confronted with who we are or who we've thought we've been for so long. Give space to yourself every day, even if it's 10, 20 minutes, every day. Find a nice spot in nature, on your deck, on your patio, in your living room, in your bed, laying down, whatever is most comfortable. And at least once a day, just take a moment to unwind. Take a moment to unwind. Just come to a stop. See who you are. You can't see who you are unless you stop. You can only think who you are, which is the opposite of seeing who you are. When you stop, you get to see who you are, know who you are, be who you are. A very powerful statement, but it's very scalable understanding is be as you are. It's very scalable, meaning I can tell a random quote unquote ordinary person on the streets to be as they are. And for them, that means just continue thinking what they're thinking, believing they're a politician, with this much money in their bank account, on their way to their job, having a wife, two kids. That's be as you are for them. But the purer you become within meaning, the more distilled, the more stilled, the more frequently you stop to directly see yourself, you will find that be as you are becomes more and more empty. It becomes more and more like a mirror, more and more like a still lake reflecting the beauty. There's less and less of a personality there. And you can still choose to operate through a personality, but the identity disappears the more frequently you actually stop. And part of this is because in truth, in direct experience, there is no linear time. This is a complete fabrication of thought. There's no proof in any direct experience that there is something such as linear time. So the only way for you to maintain your sense of being the separate individual self with a history and a past and a memory is to repeat those thoughts over and over and over and over again. Because if you interrupt that for long enough, the linearity of it will start to drop away, will start to deconstruct itself. When you do not have the assumption that there is linear time, you're assumed identity falls away and be as you are starts to upscale real quick and by upscaling I mean get closer to the frequency of God the frequency of life itself existence itself Satchidananda existence consciousness bliss the universal beingness the universal self but there's not that many people on a day-to-day -day basis that remind us of this silence that remind us to stop so it's good to remind yourself, you need a little bit of discipline. Get to sense when you're going crazy. And it's much sooner than you think. And the more sensitive you become, the sooner you see that you already went too far. Too far into what? Too far into concepts, really. Too far into thought. If we want to stay true and authentic, we need to understand that there's a difference between running away with thoughts and concepts. And it can be fun to create with. It's like playing with a substance, but the substance is not really what you are. So you're just playing with the substance like a child playing with sand, building sand castles, dissolving the sand castles. And there is no rigidity to any of that play. So if anything, use concepts for the purpose of creating, sharing benefit, and playing. But when it comes to your self-knowledge, that needs to transcend even that which you are doing as a creator. If your sense of self does not exceed or transcend or go beyond the clay that you're playing with, then you will identify yourself with the things that you're doing and the outcome to those things. And you identify with your occupation or your creatorshipness. And that will still place you in a seat of insanity, which is I am separate from God. I am my own entity, separate from God. But the more you stop, the more naturally God takes over. It's so beautiful. You just have to bear the discomfort. 
long enough and God will take over. And this whole story that you had for the past so many months or years, or however long it's been since you've actually stopped and paused and cleansed, it's a cleansing of the soul. It's the best type of fast is silence. Other fasts are secondary. The best fast is to fast from the mind itself. This cleanses the soul, not just the body, not just the emotional body, not just the mental body. This cleanses all the carried baggage. And it's uncomfortable when you've been carrying all that baggage, all that luggage. You don't really feel how heavy it is until you put down the baggage. You can go on, you know, once you're running a marathon. There's no difference between 38 or 40 miles. It's only when you stop, this is why people fear this total stoppage. Because there's no clarity there, there's no certainty there. So it's only when we fully stop long enough, either you're going to continue to stop and, and face the discomfort, go over that heap, that hump, that bump, go through that valley, valiantly, courageously, wanting it. Really another word for courage is wanting it. If you want it, you have courage. If you don't really want it, you're going to appear like you don't have courage. But we're all courageous because we're all here. We all choose to have these bodies. We all choose planet Earth, we chose planet Earth. So you're courageous by nature. It's just a matter of what you invest that courage in. Do you invest it in doubt and certainty and security? Or do you invest it in your true self and the benefit of all in realizing the God state within? the source state. And so oftentimes this is why we need retreats or longer periods of silence or fasting or whatever it might be, whatever the permission slip is that we need to put ourselves in the state of detoxing the soul. And it's very necessary. It's very necessary being part of this civilization. It's very necessary. We're constantly inundated with frequencies, constantly inundated with vibrations. You know, from Wi-Fi to electrical cables to other people, most of all. The collective consciousness, most of all. That's the most entrancing. That's the most deluding. That's the most suffocating one. Why? Because it's very not obvious that it's not you. It seems to be you every day. You wake up with the thoughts you think are yours. You feel things that you think are your feelings. So many of it... I'd say more than 90% of it is not actually yours. So it's important to have this awareness at some point. It really makes it easier. And it's not, a, it's not a form of not taking responsibility for what you're feeling. It's just understanding that you are good to let go. Just let go. It's good to let these things go. They're not you. You're not letting go of yourself. You can't let go of yourself. It's impossible. If you let go of everything, the only thing that remains would be you. And the analogy for this is the body, or say, the body of a monkey. It grabs onto a branch, and then it's onto the next branch, onto the next branch. And the nature of attachment and letting go usually is that we don't really let go of one branch until we have a firm grip on the next, which is just the nature of how our psychology works. Nevertheless, anything that we repeatedly imagine and are repeatedly told by others will become our inner experience. As a result of this limited edition of you, this limited version of you being repeatedly imagined, you now fear letting go of that security. It's like holding on to a hologram and making it appear so real and then beginning to realize the holographic nature of that hologram, that it lacks any substance and any separation and any inner or outer. And this, is, this all naturally is revealed through silence, through being inward, truly inward, restful. Everything that you are today, pretty much, is an expression of society. How many assumptions do you have today because of this constant programming, this constant subliminal automatic messaging that's happening all the time? How many assumptions do you have about life, who you are, why you're here, what you're supposed to do? And how
how much of your everyday experience is direct knowledge, direct experience of the self. We could make a distinction between what you are and who you are. Who you are is who you express yourself to be in this moment. What you are is the changeless self, it's the source from where all these projections arise and appear. The true source, the true inner self, which just so happens to be God, just so happens to be the universal, isn't it, as well. This is taking a responsibility, so just a different way. Because you're consciously saying, none of this is mine. None of this belongs to me. None of this is guided by me. I give this up to source, to creator, which I know I am ultimately. But that only begins, that knowledge, that direct experience knowledge, only begins to dawn. That you're one with the creator begins to dawn in silence. What is silence? Silence isn't even so much silence. It doesn't mean that nothing necessarily has to arise. It means that there is no active attraction to anything but knowing yourself in that moment, being aware of the innermost sense of me, that which has never left you, never will leave you. That which does not change. Can you hold on, so to speak, maintain God? We're all maintaining something all the time. You're maintaining a thought, an assumption of who you are, where you're at, where you're going, what you need to do. But instead of maintaining all these ideas, can you consciously quiet down those assumptions to the point where you can maintain God? Throughout conversation, throughout thought, can you maintain God? Feeling the self that doesn't change, being able to feel it, to begin to lock onto it and let everything else pass as it comes and goes. Let sensations be as they are. Let your voice be as it is. Let your thoughts be as they are. You maintain God, undistracted, like a driver undistracted by the windshield wipers on a rainy day. If humanity could commit just to that, just to something true within, rather than chasing good and avoiding bad, this whole planet would transform itself overnight on the physical level, on the outward level, just because we're connected to Source. And the only thing we need to be connected to Source is, is character, it's courage, it's faith. This means that we need the willingness, the faith, the courage to let go of our assumptions and our constant chasing of objects, sense objects. We need to take back what we are and rest it back into what we actually are. Let who we are take care of itself more and more. Let it flow. Let it happen. Don't hold it. 